Hi everyone, this is Polyspawn, and in today's video, we'll go over what is a QRC and its anatomy, some ways of using it with Python, and what are its benefits. You may already know how to use a QRC, but this may give you some additional context and show you how to write it from scratch. So what is a QRC file? A QRC is a file extension and an acronym for QT Resource Collection. A QRC is a file type used by the QT Resource System to make images and other files accessible to applications through compiling. Here's a little graph I made to describe their relationship, starting with the image at the bottom left into the QRC and compiled into another file format to be shown and accessible to the GUI. If we look inside, the text is human readable, and it's really just a simple XML file that lists files on disk. The paths are relative to the directory containing the QRC file, and note that the listed resource files or images must be located in the same directory as the QRC file or in one of its subdirectories. So how are they made? They can either be handwritten or created by the Q resource browser in Qt Designer. In my other video I'll have on screen, I show how to create and convert a QRC from Qt Designer to Python, but today I'll just handwrite it for our example. Those are both viable options. This is just an XML anatomy image that I found on Google, and it breaks down each of the sections of a typical XML. There are just a couple things here that are included that won't be needed for the QRC. For example, the XML declaration is optional, and the document type declaration is a comment, so it's not needed for our code. For the parts we do need, the first root element needs to be set to RCC, and the sub element needs to have a prefix attribute containing a string. I found that without these two things, the compiler won't be able to find the images. But other than that, it's just setting relative paths as characters inside the file. In order for us to use the QRC, we first need to compile it. And inside the Python UI file, you also need to import the compiled Python file. You can see that when I set my images in Designer, I use set style sheet, but you can also use any of the built-in widget methods like set icon. In order to use set icon, I just had to also create a Q icon and set the icon size for it to be viewable. Now, if I run this, you can see that the set icon is working the same way. So I'll just keep this here just to show another method. Next, I'm going to quickly write a QRC file to point to the icons in this color var folder and also separate the icons into their own icon prefix. I'll compile the new QRC with PI RCC like I did in my last video. First, I need to change the import to look at written RC. I'll also need to change the prefix in the source path for my two icons. And if I run it, I have the UI pointing to my color bar images. Now I'm just going to give these aliases and recompile. In the application, instead of having the prefix directory file name and extension in the source path, now I can just use the prefix and alias. What are the benefits of using a QRC? So you may be wondering why would I use a QRC file instead of just pathing directly to the file path of an actual image? That's a very valid question. Martin Fitzpatrick, a senior software engineer and QT developer, sums it up like this. The main advantage comes when packaging and distributing your applications. Because your data is bundled with Python source code, you eliminate all the potential path problems and guarantee your data files will be accessible to your app. You can also use Qt Designer to manage and group your icons for your application. The downside, of course, is you need to recompile your resources anytime you add or remove new resources. Whether this trade-off is worth it for your project is up to you, but if you plan to distribute your application to other people, it almost always is. So if you're just creating a GUI for your own use, or if you have a shared server with the people you're developing for, there may not be any need to use a QRC file and the QT resource system, and rather just path to your images instead. 
but if you're releasing your tool to others, it adds a level of professionalism and makes it somewhat more orderly. The downside to using a QRC file, like he said, is if you have to make changes, you'll need to recompile them. That's all for now, guys. Obviously, this video isn't the entirety of the topic, but I hope it helps you get more familiar with the concept. I have a QT style sheet video planned next and a little coding experiment I did with Python and Instagram, so I might share that. Stay tuned. See you next time.